Once upon a time, a very wise fisherman came upon a strange bottle at the ocean's edge. When the fisherman opened the bottle, a giant genie appeared. Now the genie had been in the bottle for hundreds of years and he was very hungry. The first thing he found to eat was the fisherman. And the wise fisherman said, I don't believe you really came from that bottle. The genie was proud. I show you. Even smaller. But the fisherman got a little too anxious and the genie saw he was being tricked. <laughs> Hey, Genie, I'll bet you can't drink all the water in the ocean. No Genie can refuse a challenge, and he started drinking the seawater. Oh. There's plenty more. Come on. Come on, more. And so the wise fisherman beat the Genie by keeping his wits about him. Superior intelligence always triumphs over strength. Approximately 11.20 this evening, firefighters have been able to keep the blaze under control. The object is believed to be a giant meteorite. An investigating team headed by Dr. Elfin is now on its way to the site. Dr. Elfin! So, this is the spot. Astro, check to see if there's any radiation. Slight nuclear radiation, but not enough to harm humans. It must be incredibly heavy. Look how deep the crater is. At least a hundred yards into the ground. All the trees are blown down. It must have been the shock and vibrations of the meteorite's impact. Astro, do you think you could go down there and get it out? Sure, I'll try. Do you know what you're doing, letting an unsupervised robot perform such an important task? Professor Adams, Astro is more than just a robot. I'd entrust him with my life. Astro, make sure you don't crack the meteorite. Wow, it's buried deeper than I thought. It must be under all this rubble. It's still glowing. The friction of coming through the atmosphere, I suppose. This thing's going to be hot. This is no meteorite. It's some kind of spaceship. What could it be? Your guess is as good as mine. Dr. Elephant, this is not made of any substance found on Earth. I've never seen anything like it. Fascinating. What a tremendous find. I'm not sure I like the looks of it. Dr. Elephant! This panel is coming loose. It comes apart. I don't know what to make of it. It's like a giant jigsaw puzzle. Dr. Elephant, I think this part goes with this, and I'll bet this part fits here. What do you think, Doctor? Astro, do you think you could put all the parts together using your computer? Yeah, that would be a lot faster. There it is, Dr. Elephant. The parts fit perfectly by a magnetic attraction. Looks like a robot. Yeah. 
<laughs> Very interesting. <laughs> this is nothing to be taken lightly, Dr. Adams. Dr. Elephant, everything fits together except this one part left over. It doesn't fit anywhere. So, doesn't fit anywhere, huh? Maybe this is a voice tape of some kind. Astro, can you translate it with your computer? I'll try. Here is Galan. Galan? Well, apparently it has a name. For use in the development of your planet. Galan can kill Plasta and transform matter as you desire to the Superintendent General of the planet Magalapa from the King of the Planet Ura. Plasta? What's that? I think Plasta is some kind of living being. Galan must have run into our solar system on his way to Magalapa, so we may have picked up something very dangerous. I don't care about that. I want to know how it moves. No! We cannot take that chance. We don't need a robot running around designed to kill living things. I recommend that we disassemble it. Disassemble? We can't do that to such a precious scientific specimen. Are you prepared to take responsibility for the lives it might take? Well, we can always disassemble it if it gets out of hand. We'll deal with it just like any other robot. If it won't obey us, we'll scrap it. I don't like some of your attitudes, Doctor. Astro, would you go out and check on Galon? Whatever you say. Adams, I never want to hear you say such things in front of Astro again. Do I make myself clear? I'll have that Galon disassembled. We need robots like Astro. Why do some people hate robots? Well, we can't agree on that point, Dr. Elephant. No, we can't. I'm going back for now. I think you'd better. I'm ashamed a scientist would feel the way you do. You can't keep me away. Galan belongs to science. I'm the Minister of Science. Do you hear? Looks like a storm's coming. Get inside, Astro. Yes, sir. Were you quarreling with him? Oh, he's a stubborn man. After the storm passes, I want you to disassemble Galan. Ours is a peaceful world. We don't need robots like him in it. Astro, are you afraid of thunder? No, I'm not. Are you, Dr. Elephant? What? Me afraid? <laughs> I, I hate it. Dr. Elephant, look! See that? The line is starting to move. Trouble! The Galapa is waiting! 
transform whole planets. I'm no match for him. If I can get him into this... It worked! to molten lava with his own power. Dr. Adams, we're getting an unidentified object on our radar about 200 meters ahead. We're almost there. Good. It must be Galan. Keep going. I'll tell you when to stop. Stop! <laughs> now I'll have Galan to work with as I please. We'll take it out piece by piece. Carefully now. Don't scratch it. Yes, the lava has completely cooled off now, but so far we haven't been able to find a trace of Galan. He must have sunk down farther than we thought. Well, no sign of him, huh? Keep the area guarded. Something's happened. We would have found him by now if he was still there. <laughs> Galon, take a good look at this island. It's completely deserted. What I want you to do is transform it, but in a very special way. I want you to make this island look exactly like the planet you came from. Oh. Camera crew, start shooting. Don't miss anything. Get everything on film. This is a scientist's dream, to be able to study and explore another planet without leaving the Earth. It's wonderful! This, huh? Professor Adams, look at this rock that Galan transformed. Why, it's pure platinum! Galan, what a planet he comes from. The whole thing is solid platinum. Just think of the experiments I can carry out, the equipment I can build with all this. <laughs> What's that smell? It's awfully strong. Sure is strange. Do an atmosphere check immediately. Oh. Atmospheric readings show 70% nitrogen, 30% ammonia, and still rising. What? What about oxygen? Only 0.2%. I should have realized. He's changing the Earth's atmosphere to be like his own. Oh. <coughs> Galon, stop it! Stop it! Where are you? <gasps> Professor Adams, you can't stay. Come to the plane! How could I be so stupid? I never thought about the air. Dr. Elephant, you were right after all. It will kill everything on this Earth. The noxious gas coming from the South Seas is spreading rapidly. Three islands are now covered and hundreds of fatalities have been reported. The luxury liner, Carolina, is missing. 
It is feared that she has entered the affected region. Astro, this is the worst situation we've ever faced. Before long, the poisonous gas will cover the whole Earth. We've got to find out what's causing it. I've depended on you before. I have to ask for your help again. I'll do my best, Dr. Elephant. ocean is full of dead seagulls. There must be gas all around. It's getting thicker now. I see an island. What a strange island. I've never seen anything like it before. Oh, there's someone over there. Oh, it's Professor Adams. What? Professor Adams? What in the world is he doing there? Galan must be at the bottom of all this. He must have used his transformational powers. If Galan's around there, please be careful. Yes, sir. Galan! Galan, listen to me. Galan, you're... You're contaminating the air. No, 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 you can't! It's for the good of mankind, Dr. Elephant. You can't use the hydrogen bomb! We have no choice. It's the only way to destroy that monster! But the radiation! What about Astro? Ah! <laughs> Astro, get away from there. A 50 megaton hydrogen bomb is headed toward the island. Oh. Missiles! It's invulnerable. Nothing can destroy that monster. You scientists give up too easily. Our Air Force will blow that blasted thing off the face of the Earth! It's no use attacking. We're just losing men in planes. Make them stop. But Astro... I've got an idea. What is it? Dr. Elephant, do you remember that legend about the genie and the fisherman? How the fisherman tricked the genie into drinking all the water in the ocean? Well, I'm going to pretend I'm the fisherman to get this genie back into his bottle. I don't know what you're talking about, but good luck. You've transformed the whole island to resemble your planet, but you forgot one thing. Want to know what it is? It's the gravity, the Earth's gravity. If you really want to make this island like your planet, you've got to change the gravity, too. I dare you to make it the same as your planet. He's falling for it. Those old legends never let you down. Just one minute! Dr. Elephant, Galan is trying to convert the Earth's gravity. But why are you making him do that? If the gravity of the island is less than that of the Earth, it'll become weightless and rise into the air. Astro, please answer me. Dr. Elephant, can you hear me? It 
worked! Astro! The part of the island where the gravity was transformed was scooped up. Galan's nowhere in sight. I see. The portion of air over the low gravity area rises to create a vacuum. The surrounding air rushes in to fill up the vacuum and sends everything up into the air like a tornado. Everything goes up just like a rocket pushing into the stratosphere, right out of the Earth's atmosphere and into outer space. Simple elementary physics. Don't cheer yet, Doctor. What's going to happen to the atmosphere with a hole punched in it? Our air will escape. Not if you only do it for one minute, and he did it for one minute exactly, just like I told him. Astro, thank you once again. Your wisdom saved us. But if Galan had been designed for good, he could have done great things. It's very hard to control great power, Astro.